Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Tarot Tuesday video. We are actually filming this on Sunday the 13th, so perhaps there's some things that are going to develop from when we're filming now to Tuesday, but with this bubble of awareness we have now, we want to bring to you a reading for the collective. We're going to do some readings about some of the hot topic situations of the world, and um, welcome to today. So, Jenny, what... What deck are you going to be bringing? What deck are you going to show us today? What are Hi we starting everybody. with? Happy Sunday yeah. um, on Tuesday. So we are, we're actually speaking to you from the past mm -hmm. on this day, um, which I actually think is going to be kind of cool if we could find a way to like predict something that happens between now and then. <laughs> That's a good cool. point. We should try um, that. We should just for just for just like a little segment just to see if we were right about something. Okay. Um, so to answer your question, I am using today the family. It's called the family. Okay. And this is a really interesting deck. This was gifted to me by none other than Heidi Vandenberg from Channel 27. Um, I used to work with her um, over on that channel. She's a Vedic astrologer. She sent me this deck. This is really cool because it's actually a compilation of all, like every single card is a different artist oh. and they all got together to make this deck. Um, and I love it. And then I'm also going to supplement that the traditional tarot um, with a deck that I made myself. So these are just like my own messages and signals and stuff like that. So what do you got? I just got this for my mother-in-law, which made me think of you actually, this particular deck. You have this oh, one? No, but oh, I but that it. makes me think about you. Well, it's my daughter's name. Luna Edition, the Ethereal Visions it Tarot. It's very pretty. It's got lots of wonderful artwork. Here's the Queen of Cups, for example. She's got some gorgeous. We've got that life. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Kind of going off of our last video where we talked a lot about whales. I think we still got that ocean energy following us and the world events and so on are involving oceanic areas. So we'll get into that, but let's do a reading now for the a blind reading maybe for everyone. And then maybe we can do a predictive one, like what's, what's to come. So People watching this video right now, we're going to shuffle for you on a message for you first. My favorite um, meme that came out of the whole orca, uh, you know, the pack of orcas. And then that was around the same time that the submarine, the submersible and the billionaires. And there's a, a meme with a guy who's got a microphone in the orca's face. And he's like, we don't know shit about the missing suffering. <laughs> and I agree. I agree. They definitely say they had nothing to do with it. Don't involve the orcas. They want no part of our drama. No, right. they saw the drama and left. Yeah. They're like, peace out. Um, message for the collective. There's a lot going on. We've got fires. We've got agendas. We've got <laughs> weirdness. Mm -hmm. Are you going to pull one, two? I got four. Okay. All right. So I had one jump out. And so I'm going to, I'm going to roll with that. Would you like to go first? No, please go ahead. Okay. So the one that jumped out was this faith. Oh, that's nice. Is that water too or no? No. So in this uh, deck, the faith card is the same as the Hierophant. Okay. It's the Hierophant card. It's just like I said, this was a compilation from a bunch of eccentric artists and they were really given carte blanche here to do whatever they wanted. And so this is synonymous with the, with the Hierophant, which is like the um, religious orders, patriarchal orders, um, very traditional. Um, I love the face you're making right now. You're like, just, mm -hmm. that's so good. Yeah, it makes sense. And then we have the uh, Ace of Pentacles, which oh. is just super beautiful. Um, 
you know, we love our aces and this has feature symbolism with a, a monarch butterflies, but they're free, which to me, anytime I see a monarch butterfly um, at this stage in the game, I just automatically equate it to anything pertaining to uh, MK Ultra programming, the mass mind control, and almost a testament to where we are at collectively with that spell or that illusion. Right. What have you got? Oh, great. So I, yeah, I was given four cards. I've got the 10 of cups going on. So that was pretty cool. 10 of cups is just, it's the end of the suit of the cups. It's the most enjoyable, I would say, emotional card, I would say, out of the group. So we're going to have some good family, friendly love vibes but after that we have the devil card man this one is quite fancy they really put that detail work in on, on yeah. mr pan over here but the the theme of this card is the self enslavement in a way to an idea or ideas that you think have sort of a sort of power over your spirit and over your life and it also can talk about primal masculine energy, this like wild, untamed primal masculine energy. So just keep, I've been getting this card a lot, actually, the last couple of days, the last day. So it seems like this is coming up to be discussed, which is interesting because we can go into that whole even antichristic direction with that potentially, like that theme is coming up a lot more. So mentioning that, then I have the tower card. So there's probably a lot of moments where you're 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 having like an ego death. You're having like a, something in your life that was supposed to work out or a direction you thought you were going no longer working out. So if that energy is hitting you today, it's okay. Don't give your power over to it. See the silver lining in this change because then the last thing is the page of swords we've got. So in a way, a message of a messenger of wisdom and information that you're definitely going to want to use. So things may be falling apart because you found out about something and you don't want to participate in it anymore, which should lead you to a better life. So it's like better life while you're kind of overcoming maybe these towers and these experiences you've had with the devil or with temptation or with this self-enslavement seems to be kind of wrapping up that's kind of what I was getting from that so that was an interesting mix of cards for sure I liked the ace of pentacles that one's been coming up a lot too for me in the readings so there's new money new wealth new opportunity coming through too the end of this year is kind of setting itself up August is setting itself up to like project into the last part of this year, the last part of the cycle or what is that? The like last quarter of the year in the business world. So mm -hmm. what we witnessed in Hawaii was potentially just in a very crude way. I'll also evidence of that. <laughs> yeah. And your video and your discussion about it got taken down. You were just telling me, on your own private video with your audience. So it is a touchy yeah. subject for sure, because even people there don't have the full story yet, or even we're getting proper internet or any access to even electricity still. And I'm it's trickling today for sure. I'm getting more updates and people uploading things on TikTok and stuff about their particular perspective, but it's very uh, crude and chaotic still so I was hoping we could do a reading about that potentially did you do a reading about that on your video that got taken down so I did a reading for it last night and I just pulled four cards that because when we talked about doing a reading for the collective in my mind I'm thinking the fires are definitely going to come up because this is um yeah I mean it's just so relevant and it's right on the forefront of collective consciousness and usually at least for me, in my experience, the cards reflect the 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 big, you know, what everybody's talking about, sort of the 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 collective algorithm, if you will. The cards will just pick up on that as like a mirror image or a reflection, right? And um, 
you know, so I've got blockage. You guys, I don't know if you can see it. Blockage. Mm-hmm. Uh, the rune uh, called Othala. Nice. For heritage, possessions, ancestral wisdom, home, and culture. Nice. And then I know. And then we have transmutation and metamorphosis mm-hmm. and not made public and behind the scenes. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Isn't that freaking wild? So something, <laughs> something like, and you know, please comment on this if it makes sense for you, but like being a diviner, you know, working in divination all this time has really, I've come into uh, uh, this understanding that confirmation bias is like, it's so real. Like we have these ideas about what is going on and it is just far too easy um, to, you know, interpret the cards um, in a very specific way due to that confirmation bias. So I'm very like, I pay close attention to that. I'm like, well, am I looking at this from a 40 foot thousand view or am I like really in it, you know, because I'm seeing what I want to see or, you know, making the pieces fit. So just uh, if you've been reading long enough, or if you just are an intuitive person, you know, that that is like a very heavy factor when it comes to being a card reader. Um, but when you're reading your own cards and you're like, oh yeah, this means this. And then someone's looking at you like, that's not what that card means to me. So you are confirming yourself. It's almost like brick walls. Like when someone really wants something, doesn't matter what the oh. cards say. Like, oh yeah, they'll twist it. They're like, yeah, that's good. I've watched oh, it. My- and I'm like, oh, now I oh. see why this is dangerous. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. But um, something I did want to, point out so you're you're right like I I did a a show for my Patreon last night it was my weekend edition live stream you know I get to talk about at least I thought I got to talk about whatever I wanted and they took the video down for medical disinformation however we didn't I didn't talk about medical anything at all we talked about the fires in Lahaina and the agenda for the 15 minute cities directed energy weapons and the use of them uh, to the, you know, to clear space, to push people out of their ancestral homes and to overtake that, um, that cultural root that has, you know, allowed these folks to maintain their foothold there. And if, you know, but if, if the agenda is to, if they are meant to transmute, transmute and, and, um, you know, create this new world for their agenda, they're going to end up taking a lot of um, places out in the same nature as Lahaina, unless something can be done. I don't know what can be done. There's probably people watching that have lots of great ideas. Um, and I think that it might really be coming down to how badly we want to keep the negative agenda at bay. Mm -hmm. Um, it's rough. Well, can you say that card stack you just got again, one more time in order? Like, so yeah. Uh, blockage, right. Blockage, uh, the rune Othala, that one was the, so good. Oh yeah. I use the elder Futhark runes um, in this deck. I literally just like drew the shape, wrote the name, and then the keywords associated with it. Now it's certainly a lot more involved than that traditionally, but it's 2023 and I make it work for me. You know, sorry, <laughs> sorry, everybody. Sorry if you don't like it. Um, I do it my way. <laughs> And then I got the transmutation metamorphosis and not made public and behind the scenes, which, you know, they are, they're trying to keep the reality of the situation very much down to a bare minimum. You know, we're seeing people, like you said, you know, on TikTok and various platforms trying to tell us, they're like, this was not a hurricane. This wasn't an accident. This was... Uh, a deliberate fire um this was a deliberate disaster 
people are talking about thousands of bodies and it's like what like I mean we saw the same thing happen in uh, Paradise California this is open combat open genocide on the American people is perpetuated by some kind of governing power or some kind of organized highly funded uh power so what are we going to do about that you guys uh, we would like that to stop please stop gonna it. down you we're gonna stop, it. stop that one we're gonna stop stop the stop. yes <laughs> it's good that the heritage thing was coming up because i was hearing in my mind was just like stolen land was over and over like stolen land and I was just like okay who stole it from where and it was like well it's got a complicated history that particular part of the island I guess that's where they came up onto the shores and like began that process there was right there I guess so and that whole courthouse and there's some goodies that were in there so I was just waiting politely like okay I'm gonna wait and see what they say what people are saying but I'm seeing, again, a lot of the hysteric people who just popping out of nowhere to tell you how it is. And I'm just like, sorry, but I don't buy it. I, your TikTok has too many views. You know, I've seen people tell the right. truth and that's not necessarily what happens after they do so, you know, online. And uh, it was tricky because I had a huge euphoric day. Like I was having euphoria coming up out of my body. And then that's what we saw on the news. And it was very weird. So I was like, something is happening and I'm very excited. And then I saw that and was like, this has to be good news. Like this has to be, cause I was feeling so good. <laughs> and then now it's like, Oh, I, it's basically a genocide and all this. And I was just like, why did I feel so good about it? Why was the good feeling? Like, was there something happening here that I, we were being distracted with something over here and like, was I happy about this intuitively? And like, this is what I got to see. And I really hope there's some sort of like thing that shows up, like this happened while the fires were occurring and blah, blah, blah. Like, is there going to move the story along that way perhaps? But there was also another fire that it reminded me of, which happened in um, Fort McMurray area, Alberta, Canada around 2016. And again, same thing where, and they did it once again in 2011 prior also, but it was just like, like streets and streets and streets, rows and rows of the houses, just the houses like decimated. <laughs> and all those people had to come into the other cities and they like took over the jobs and we had to like house people and like feed them and all the restaurants and waitresses are just giving their, the food and their service away for free to feed these families that just got, their just house turned to ash oh and that was the Canadian drama version. And then, yeah, then came down here 2019, I think was the Paradise Fires. And I was right there when it was happening too. We were driving past them. Didn't know that's what we were driving past. But when we were just about to book our trip to go to that exact part of Maui. So we were like, okay, like what, <laughs> what are we doing? Like part of me is just like, why, why is this? Why? Oh, and also the Penticton, there was a Osoyoos, Soyuz, I think it's how it said, but again, in Canada, just north of the border, they had a freak fire just a few days earlier. And I got woken up with that one too. Like I felt that one was coming, but I didn't know what was happening there. So there's this clearing going on. And I think there is, a, you know, then the religious factor comes in and the you know, are you purging? Why, what is the earth purging? What is being purged? What is being pu pulled up? What is, and I think it's waking people up, which is good. Waking people up out of that, like maybe that Island vibe too, where they were kind of passive, but had a lot of, I would say undercurrents of issues and that oh, they yeah. were struggling with the, a lot. And a lot of those people living there sounded like they were there kind of fighting the man and just like staying in their homes in that particular area and they wanted to develop it. So I don't know. I don't know. Something else, something so, else is going to come to light about it, but maybe we should just do a blank prediction about what will happen on Tuesday to like, see what'll happen for the world. What's going to be about that. What do you think? What do you want to move on to next? 
Well, I just wanted to, because it's, you know, you were mentioning that you felt this sense of euphoria. Um, or yeah, some, I'm on the blue. Uh, that's weird because I felt the same on that same day. Okay. Um, and for me, it was different. I was feeling euphoria because I had um, sort of called a stop to a toxic situation in my life. Oh. Um, and sweet absolutely had to kind of light my own fire <laughs> in a way and so there felt there was such a sense of release and relief and all that going on and when I did the card pull for um as I work with a man you folks watching some of you folks watching know Bix Weir from the road to Ruda um you guys probably know who he is, but I, I've worked with him a lot and he had me pull some cards because his family has visited Lahaina for decades. Like that, that's like their spot that they go to. Oh, so he wow. was like, hey, look at this. So I pulled the cards. Oh, Alexis, you're frozen. Come back. Unfreeze. There you go. Okay. <laughs> um, the cards actually implied that, and at the time I didn't know what was going on. Like we didn't know what we know now. Yeah. And it looked like there was some kind of a school and that I use that term loosely, but it was like a, a uh, location where um, children and young people were being trained, um, learning certain arts and, and developing certain skills. And the island was targeted in part due to that happening. And it was very much about the, I kept getting the empress, you know, which is, again, it's about land. It's also, there is, there's something about this masculine principle and this feminine principle coming together in like an alchemical marriage, but that was working through the people of the island where people were reconciling all kinds of you know, it could be spiritual, emotional, psychological differences that they've been dealing with in their culture um, yeah. for, for a long time. But it looked as if, um, you know, this actually was going to have somehow a beneficial effect. Now, how can we say that when there's thousands of people, they're reporting thousands of people dying. I don't think me mainstream is reporting that at all, but the people on the ground are, and I believe the people on the ground how can this equate to anything good in, in such tragedy? And I don't, I, I don't know. Um, I can only speculate, but it appears that there may have been, it, it feels to me like there was almost some kind of a rescue mission or some kind of a, um, what, like while the fires were going on, there may have simultaneously been a rescue that takes place. That's really what I'm trying to get at. And I'm, I'm feeling like, you know, the, maybe the euphoria, the feeling of anticipation, the feeling of excitement, you know, there are a lot of things that can go on in a day, in a minute, in an hour on planet earth at any yes. given time. There's trillions and trillions, lim limitless, infinite experiences happening. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that there are, are good things happening on this planet um, at the same time that there are atrocious things going on. Interesting. I, I wasn't, I was not getting what you were getting, but I really enjoy that you told me that because it's giving me a whole new perspective because again, that is definitely the main mission is like find and rescue these people and these children like big time. And so huge good on that. But I was also seeing since they may have also burned a library in the courthouse that some sort of contract got like some sort of magic contract got literally burned. That's what I was being shown. Like oh. some sort of like, you know, the land grab stuff, like all these paperwork and stuff that they made the queen sign and stuff. It was kind of like, like that's over. And I was like, oh, okay, good. I, I was just hoping, like I was just sitting there like, okay, what's going on? Like somebody tell me something. It was just like, oh. those contracts are crisped now they're gone and I was just like right. oh but I kept seeing something underground also underground yeah so I was like something's, something's under there 
Yeah. yeah. But um, I mean, gosh, the whole islands are completely, I feel like almost all of them are taken over by modern, the modern. Oh, the military Alaska. owns it. The, yeah. the, the, mil- the military has occupied those, those islands and has such a strong foothold. You know, it is, it's so interesting to uh, sort of compare you know, the natural, natural forces of the world that were arguably sent underground by um, the Hierophant forces, if you will, kind of like, uh, you know, True. when, when the Spanish and the, um, the white people, you know, came and there was war between the indigenous and the newcomers and I'm not taking sides. So don't fucking come for me. (laughs) I'm not talking shit. I'm just being honest. There were wars, right? And I think a lot of natural forces that like their part of their function on planet earth is to defend the defenders where like humans, literally the flora and the fauna, the tides, the, the, the wind, the everything. I think we really do share a truly like sentient, harmonious, synergistic relationship with it. Mm -hmm. And that was something that was a lot more clearly understood by native and indigenous tribes. I'm not saying they were perfect. They were killing each other. They were sacrificing each other, all kinds of shit, whatever. Nobody's perfect. Again, don't fucking come for me. I'm just trying to talk about it. But I think that there are forces of nature that were sent, that were forgotten about, and they kind of require our acknowledgement of them mm-hmm. at times where it's like, are do you see that we see, do you see that we're family? Do you see when you attempt as, as a whole to live without nature or you think you're separate from nature do you see what happens to you people when you fall so far from your symbiotic relationship with with the flora and the fauna of this earth do you see yet sort of thing and so I wonder if like the islands the tides the the sun and the moon if if they're gonna just start fighting back and you know protecting itself like a like an antibiotic or a you know something that comes in to attack a virus so um because I know I don't want anybody to think oh like Jenny went woke on us and here she's bitching about colonizers like I'm not like there have been bad guys and good guys on all sides of the playing field I'm not so I really just it's true that's a good point also that even though there's well-meaning people there is always some sort of being in there that is the anomaly and is causing problems but then the nice people are like trying to just ignore them <laughs> right but then so they cause way more don't, issues don't pay attention to them don't listen to that guy he's crazy yeah like, yeah well he's just sick just let him sit out over there he's yeah he's with us but it's and then it's like oh homie did nobody some likes that guy <laughs> yeah right. i've gotten a few visions about that and it's like don't ignore that being just because you're nice. Don't ignore them. I was like, right, right, right. So keep track of that guy or gal, whatever. Always don't just give them the benefit of the doubt, but there is all that dynamic too, where it's like when the great good is showing up, then right next to it can be the great evil or something. It's like they can show together and so i feel like if we're getting shows of these big awful things there must have been something equivalently good happening potentially and i mean i was having some really intense religious revelations almost in that time also and thought that this was momentum towards that and then saw the complexity and then i got i got instant um almost attacked as well like back onto me like you can't behave this way and the all but all the messages coming through me was trust yourself like you've trusted yourself and now you really know why you can trust yourself was kind of the activation I got the last week was trust yourself you've done it you've done it you're doing it and you know what to do and that trust I assume is being I want to say deepened as well in those who did survive because that's also a spiritual engagement like 
I was just at the store and I was out of harm's way. Like, where are those stories? I'm sure we're going to see those come up too. Like I was just out of town with my family and I missed this experience. And, you know, that is development of that trust and of that alignment with the elements and with, with the Holy spirit or with that ethereal side or a spiritual side of like being in the flow of life and where you're supposed to go, you'll be there. And I've been feeling that a lot more and also getting tested on that a lot more, but it's, I think I've like built another level of strength of trust in myself in this time and to then boldly go on against and being like, well, and talk about such an inflammatory topic. It's tricky, but you can't not trust like this euphoria that you feel in your body. Like I was literally happy crying in the grocery store for no reason. Like I was just laughing, like, (laughs) like tears. And I was just like, I don't know what's going on right now, but I'm feeling it like it's, it's happening. So I'm not sure about that. Not sure what that is yet, but I'm excited. And I have hope for us in the springtime of North America also that things are going to have that moment where we're going to have that potential crux or meeting point of that anti and Christ energy kind of rearing its head which is kind of when they started the 2020 thing was also that time of year in that march early spring time so i was like okay that time matters this upcoming spring is really now on my schedule of things to think about and work towards and it's kind of going to carry me through i feel like the next few months of what is going to keep meeting the rising light and consciousness like as a challenge and i'm prepared like I, I'm mentally, physically, I feel like I've done this lifetime. So it's like, okay, now that it's the finish line is getting really close. We're going to start seeing the other side rear its ugly head more and more. And like I was telling you off screen, well, some man was asking his Alexa device, which I don't recommend anyone have. If I can work, if I can say it out loud, I just have to speak my truth. Maybe don't have those in your house. Right. Just saying if you have them, whatever, but it's meant to be, but I'm just like, if you don't, don't do it. Cause I feel like that voice is going to keep antagonizing. And that is kind of like the point of it is to antagonize us. And which is good if you're, if you trust yourself, what? To engage us. To engage us. It wants to force us to engage in this psychic tether um, and, and sort of ground our energy into a synthetic network as opposed to the natural network um fascinating stuff I was like amazing um I just wanted to say like yeah I'm getting so I have the not what it seems bigger picture electrical power solar and internet um then we've got some other stuff father son brother attraction and magnetism white magic and protection nice. um you know the idea is so, so this what this absolutely does is pro- this has probably woken up what it certainly has not done <laughs> is is put more people to sleep this serves to remind people how serious this shit is yes and that this is what we can expect to continue to happen unless there is some kind of um uh, unless we can reconcile this unless we can push them back or work together uh or what have you or even just put our energy elsewhere um you know i really i have to say i think that there are organ organized groups of powerful beings that we don't hear about much we don't um you know they they don't make headlines they're not in the news um but they they do work and they're constantly active they're constantly moving and it is very much um p- part of the negative agenda or the dark agenda to keep our attentions away from from that you know that that there are good things happening in the world and that there are organized groups of folks that are um fake thunderstorm outside (laughs) 
Oh, and I say fake gosh. fake thunderstorm because it's just like I was gonna say organized groups of good people. <laughs> good people. No, there and there are, I mean, they're capable people, right? Because because even good people are subject to make mistakes and you know, if they're human, they're they're imperfect naturally. But, you know, and a lot of it I'm really drawn to what's going on underground. I think that there are major subterranean um activities taking place anybody right now can go to military.com you can go back to 2017 or 2018 and there they have we have the paper trail for the amount of money that they have put into uh training uh soldiers for subterranean uh, warfare um namely beneath metropolitan areas so we know, you know, they don't put trillions of dollars or billions of dollars into just anything. You know what I mean? Like talk to a soldier, an active duty soldier, national guardsman right now. And they'll tell you that their gear is falling apart. Like they don't get new shit. They don't get nice stuff. You know, the average soldier or airman or sailor is suffering. They're struggling because all of that money is going into uh, other things. Um so, I mean, is it for good? Is it for bad? I don't know. The cards seem to show a fair mix of both. Yes. <laughs> like, there's good, there's really amazing things happening. And there's um, really bad things that appear to to happen so that they can almost, per- it's like, it activates us. We don't know what we can do or what we're capable of until we're in hot water. And we're like, oh shit, it's do or die. Um, and I think, you know, like you mentioned, as our consciousness rises as our awareness um, crystallizes, you know, mm-hmm. I feel like knowledge really does change paradigms. What we know today changes us as a people, as we integrate it into, you know, within the individual, within small groups and then larger groups, it grows. Knowledge really integrates itself within people and, and over time changes the way that a collective behaves. And so I think knowing what we know, we give this a few months, if we give this a few years, all of this counts, everything counts, every little bit of it counts to prepare people, to make people understand, to make people see, you know, what kind of weaponry is being utilized against us. And I really believe that there is a principle, there is a law, the law of duality, the principle of duality ultimate good requires ultimate evil and vice versa, the yin and the yang, the light and the dark. It has to be that way. So if they really think that they're going to take over planet earth and open up a whole bunch of portals, either through people, through meridian points on the planet or in the ocean or in the sky, all that really tells us is that the exact opposite must happen. So if there is bad shit that comes through, then good shit's coming through too. And that's just, that's just law. That's just the way that it is. There has to be balance. Yep. I feel that. And I think it's interesting. You also got that father, son, brother card for sure. was like, yeah, that's what I feel is very true. Daddy's coming home. Yeah. And that's why this is happening but it's interesting like the little whispers and the little information that maybe can protect you or can give you that I would say maybe motivation to mobilize is if you know that you're living in an area that is desired by higher real estate and you're holding out I would say I don't be careful about that behavior like maybe not worth it And if you're living in an area where they have really high, they have to pay their workers really high, but the jobs are running out or the work is now not there, that's another sign that they would do something in that area is what I was seeing. So like if you're living in a spot where you know that's kind of the vibe, perhaps move and move to somewhere where there's no specific drama or move more closer to your more awakened friends, at least to where they are at. And team up and stay in cahoots with each other because I have my online uh, diary where I basically will share whatever insights I'm getting and visions and stuff. And I follow people who do the same. And I've got a few of them in Hawaii because I've been seeing a lot of visions lately of the place already. And that was when 
the volcano started going off last year. That was when I was starting to get more information and how the like islands were like shape changing shape and the whales were involved. And that was the whole thing last year. And I was very excited and, but it continues. Like it seems to be a cauldron of a spot or a central point of evidence of like what is to happen on our planet. It seems to be a constant focal point when the solar flares are hitting us. Like I'm watching Hawaii get hit over and over and over. So I'm like, okay, well, clearly that's an interesting spot. I was nervous to even go there. And now I'm like, okay, maybe I don't need to go there at all. Still hands off of that area a little bit, but the, the pressure is being felt in other areas around the United States, North, South America in general, obviously everywhere in the East, there's a lot of those types of land grabs and things, and there's other disasters happening. A lot of flooding is going on which was also coming through a lot before it kind of happened was like, get on the boat. Like Noah's Ark is filling up. Like Mm -hmm. there is shifts happening. So just keep an eye on the weather. Like this was a hurricane thing that blew past uh, Hawaii that they say did this, but I'm literally now seeing today that there's another low pressure storm coming in the same path right now. So by Tuesday, more stuff could be on fire or something like they would maybe continue doing this because other locations on the island are also on fire. Like there was multiple places (laughs) right? and that's only just one island. Like, yeah. And there's a few there. So, Hmm. I do want to predict and see like, if we can see what's going to happen by Tuesday, like whatever we need to know by Tuesday. All right. And so of course, and um, maybe we'll, you know, so that folks watching will be able to listen to our predictions and then go and and be able to verify it and and have like confirmation like, oh, you know, I'm gonna tune the question, tune the prediction to like specific key words, key elements um, so that folks are like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Because really like, you know, a trillion things happen every yeah. second of it. It could be anything. Um, it could be anything. <laughs> it literally is so huge. It's so massive. But um specifically maybe things that you guys will be hearing about headlines, keywords, buzzwords, that sort of thing. Stand by everybody. Oh I got a jumper. I got a few jumpers. You're such a silent shuffler. Good. I'm, I'm glad. glad. I've just like been hitting it like, <laughs> okay, this is really making me work for it. Like, what is it that we need to talk about now that it'll be relevant on Tuesday? There we go. Isn't it funny how the card, it just knows, the cards just know. It's like a, it's like a pat, like a lock, like on a locker. You remember like when we used to, in school, yes. you have your little locker and you listen for the click, you know, it's ready when you hear that click. It's like, okay. Cut or loose. False. He's ready. Yep. It's false. Yep. Man, I'm glad right, we don't do have, have to do that anymore. That was stressful. What'd you get? What'd you get? Oh my God. I do not wish school again on my worst enemy. No. I I can't. I can't well, we got like the it. star card for oh, what we need yes. to do. So that's mm-hmm. excellent news. These cards are fun. She's Those awesome. Are so beautiful. She's also a being who works with the waters as well not in this card but that's how i remember her is water and land related so healing of the water and the land by tuesday so we've got a little bit more news cycle to happen till until then so i'm sure monday is going to be interesting but the, i am seeing a good theme overall of the people there like showing up to be of support which we were expecting like of any of the places it makes sense that that place would do well in a disaster because they're, you know, they're also mostly prepared for some type of disaster because they live on a freaking volcano. So it's kind of like, they're all kind of ready. And then that communal energy is coming through more. It's like taking over people's hearts. They're moved by the level of response. So that's good. I'm glad to see the star card. The healing is 
is there. So Tuesday healing. That's what I got. I love the star card. I really, it's one of my favorite cards. Me too. Um, number 17. Yeah. The plan to save the world. And yes, I still believe that there's a plan to save the world. So like you can get the hell off. I don't even want to hear it. If you're a black pillar, you know, a doomsdayer, we're all going to die. You can, you can just do Stop 10 manifesting back- that. You can do 10 backflips in the other direction. I don't mm-hmm. want to hear it. I don't want to see it. If you have accepted your defeat, that is completely on you. Don't bother the rest of us while we are actually trying to have, you know, um, productive discourse. We're trying to rally people together. We're trying to have productive conversations. Go be a doomer somewhere else. Thank you. Okay. So this is what I got. So I have the Knight of Cups. Oh, yes. So yes, Knight of Cups two of pentacles and you know yes. when we use specific cards uh, i'm sorry specific decks like i would really encourage people to start looking at their tarot decks as if they are almost like they're very specific like they they're almost like they, they have their own personalities they have their own languages and so the two of pentacles from this deck can really have its very own essence as compared to the two of pentacles from another deck and so this looks like a tree that has been scorched you see there's fire and um you know it it's you know but and there's i'm i've actually seen images coming out from the island of trees that have survived actually like old old big grandma trees that have managed to withstand it and they're still there and then we have the six of cups which is amazing that's a so, cute yeah. one too good <laughs> art on good? that one yeah i like that one and you know i think that this is in line with what you got with the star right. is that in t- in times of crisis you really do see people come together and it's like really the best and worst is brought out of people yes when when you have nothing else, you know? So, um, and again, I'm really drawn to the idea that these fires, you know, when you think about the recovery process or the rebuilding process, you know, the powers that be really have this wild idea. I shouldn't even call them powers that be the cabal, the death cult, the military industrial complex, these like fuckos, pardon my language. Um, they have this wild idea that can somehow wrangle the individual free will of billions of people this is this is a testament to their arrogance their desperation and their cowardice is that they will they're willing to do anything they're like we just have to keep the show has to go on the agenda we have to we have to do this we and we're on a we're on a schedule they are on a schedule they think that they can actually wrangle human consciousness um, successfully. And in some cases they can, but in most cases they cannot because free will and the immortal soul of the human being is indomitable. It is indomitable. So they're not going to be successful at, at, um, dampening human, the human condition, which is to help one another when we are suffering. So they're not going to, they, they can't plan for that because they don't have that you know, it's all about projection. They think we're going to flip out and, and act like zombies and psychos because that's what they would do in, in crisis. They wouldn't help each other. They would throw each other, each other under the bus. It's a testament to how disconnected from reality these people actually are. This, this group, this agenda, it's so misguided. Like they're so, they're just so wrong. Um, but anyways, I think that the recovery process and the rebuilding process all across the board from the impending destruction, because there will probably be more of this, I actually think that the fire displaces earth Mm -hmm. um, and also water events displace earth and uncover things that were buried, Mm -hmm. things that were hidden. And so you start to see things come up. You're like, oh my God, you know, like you, you see it's like it's revealed you know earthquakes reveal things yeah. fires reveal yeah. things water you know things in a tidal wave for example things wash up on the shore for weeks after we're like holy shit we didn't even know that that was in the ocean 
you know, it's like, so with the bad comes this great revealing. Right. And um, as far as keywords that are coming up in the collective on Tuesday, I have double agent, the double agent card. Oh. <laughs> Tone it down, stay calm, Yeah. high risk, high risk, high reward and caution. And then we have the runes uh, for day increase growth and awakening and the rune for fire, warmth, power, and energy. Yeah. So the double agent, I think we're going to see some, some real audacity on the part of some bad actors trying to keep the narrative copacetic. Mm -hmm. um, so look out for bad actors and people that are pretending to represent uh, the people. Yeah. But you guys already know that. That's not, that shouldn't be shocking at all. Bad actors are everywhere. That's how you make a movie. Yeah. <laughs> they're the only ones who think they're good enough to be the actor. You know, I was thinking, um, and everybody here has probably seen The Matrix, but remember like that, the, the, like the Judas character, Cypher, his name was Cypher. And he was like one of them. He was supposed to be part of the team. Then he turned on everybody like a, like a Judas. And so he's sitting with Agent Smith and they're in some beautiful restaurant. And uh, Cypher says, he, he like cuts a piece of his steak. And he's like, the mate, you know, my brain tells me that this is delicious and, you know, great. But I know that it's nothing. It's the matrix. And he's trying to like, he's making a deal with the agent. He's like, I don't want to remember anything and I want to be somebody important like an actor and it all clicked and I was like the the bad actors that we see on a world stage to some degree they are initiated and there is a level of knowing that they they chose to turn their back on so that they could front this agenda so that they could be part of it and they made some kind of a deal with that antichrist or that devil archetype or whatever is representative of control and deception on humanity. So it just occurred to me, like these bad actors, they're not accidentally there. Like they chose the Judas archetype. That's their path. So we got to just, you know, I'm not saying beware, be cautious. I'm just saying, you know, just, it's just knowledge. It's just more information so funny that you bring them up because I was thinking about the last supper painting where, you know, it's Christ is in the middle. And then we have all of these dudes on the table and there's been a lot of breakdowns of like, that's the astro astrological signs. And these are all these different themes and so on. But for me, I was just kind of thinking like, homie just brought together potentially all these families and like all these heads of families and gangs and all of this together potentially for this supper was just like let's eat together and they could because the space that christ was holding as the you know center guest like allowed for all of the children again to sit together and despite wow. their differences despite what families they represented and it just kind of hit me today and i was like wow that's really cool i really like that and so if this character, this being is real in a personhood, like they're going to walk the earth again. It's like, even these people, it's like, did they know that this person was going to come back and that they took this role to like serve as the antagonizer and they're getting some type of spiritual, you know, up, like they're getting their own spiritual growth out of this. And there is like that yeah. path that I don't quite, I'm not there. So I don't get it. Like, that's not the one I picked. And right. I'm <laughs> I'm like, are we all just going to sit down uh, and, this, and have this supper again? Like, are, is there going to be that point again where everyone feels safe to just sit together and eat together and be together? And I'm hoping that that is the case. And like, we're just watching the process of all the beings who literally can't do that, just having to go away because yes. they're just not in resonance with this new hologram or whatever that's going to populate for us like where we're all going to be even closer and more I don't know brothers and sisters instead of uh competing corporate uh agents or whatever and have, mentality yeah I'm, I'm 
I'm wondering about that. And your cards are definitely interesting. Like even the six of cups coming in where it was like, we're kind of bringing back that, that history and that like being together as children and playing and, and being in a good vibe from your past. And <laughs> it's funny. Cause it is like, again, the biblical stuff comes up a lot with the, like saving the world. And I didn't get a full biblical raising. So when I just like, I just like hear things and I get little sentences and pictures and like the art from the rent, like those times, like you see the art and then you think about it again, you're like, Oh, I'm seeing this whole new thing. And one of the things in the artwork I was seeing was the last, potentially the last painting done by Da Vinci, I think was it. And it was Christ holding us a, an orb, a clear orb. And it was just like a picture of him and he's just holding this orb and it's clear oh. and blue orbs have been a theme a little lately, especially because we're like on the blue marble, our planet, but lately everywhere I'm seeing pictures of this Fear. orb being held yeah. by like, you know, a goddess or like it's a picture of a goddess and there's the orb and like, it's always clear. And I was like, okay, something is happening. <laughs> I'm getting a message about a clear orb and it's cool because it's like, you know, it's clear. Like you can see through it. There's no, there's no trickery. There's no distortion of the light. It's really just this object, but it's full clarity. And so purity, there's no like color distortions or even like racial issues. Like it's clear. It's see-through. It'll be what color you put it in front of. Like, it'll be a part of what you put it on. It doesn't have its own, I don't know, distinguishing. Reflections. It's yeah, reflective. it's reflective too. And it, it gives off this like clear energy, this clear light. And I'm not sure why I'm bringing that up right now, but it just kind of feels like there is what I truly want is clarity. I want this clarity and I want yeah. feelings of safety and security and also this biblical feeling to like that I'm experiencing to just kind of be shown that I'm feeling this level of hope and trust that I've never felt before about the potential for our planet to go into this golden age time where we're going to be sitting at that table together and everyone's going to be forgiven. Like there's going to be not even any status about how terrible you were in your past. Cause it'll be a forgiven. And it's like, that's gone. Like you don't get to think yourself something unforgivable because you've been forgiven. And I've just been hearing that a lot. It's like, it just kind of takes and breaks apart that, that status that maybe people feel like are gaining through doing not great things. And like my not great thing is more intense than your not great thing. So I have some status over you. And, and then on the opposite side, like, oh, I do all these amazing things. And it's like, we're all getting like, leveled out like a, yeah like a ba back to baseline yeah there's a new thing that like there's going to be a new thing we want to classify ourselves with or like yeah position around instead of well, how we're dealing with it right now and that's all kind of falling apart especially with money and land and it's great because I don't believe anyone can own land. I don't believe that that makes any sense. I don't believe in ownership really at all. It's it's just, we're, like we're borrowing it it's it's like yeah. we're using it but it's not really you know it's not any more mine than yours and I mean you know they say well I paid for it and it's like well with what like fake <laughs> money from Babylonian money magic like get the hell out of here you know like there and there there is enough to go around you know the scarcity mentality I think is like that's probably, probably the biggest culprit is the idea that there's just not enough to go around right um, I have a video I made years ago called uh 5d machines or something like that and you can you can find it but okay um, nice the it was like how Trump so I, I I saw President Trump as a physical avatar like his physical avatar the person that we see as president donald j trump is actually like a physical manifestation of a 5d mechanism and this is why and when you bring up the sphere the clear sphere you know the sphere is very sensitive to what you are projecting into it like a color and if it's uh you know it, it's a it's a highly reflective um surface and so my whole thing was like 
Trump is like what he Trump is Trump was the sphere and he was sort of the catalyst energy wow. that you know what it did was it changed everybody it was like who you were deep down was going to be part of your um, ability to perceive what he truly is and what this whole thing was about. And so if you had severe daddy issues or you had issues with authority or if you were triggered by anything, right. you were going to have to face that because that's the sphere and that's what you see. You, whatever you are, you will see in this mechanism. And so it was really, it doesn't make you bad. It doesn't make you good. It's, it's just information. And now you, what is required is enough sort of spiritual maturity mm -hmm. to take a step back and say, am I being a big baby? Do I need to get over it? Do I need to heal? Do I need to rectify something, recon reconcile something? But the idea was that depending who you were as an individual person, as a soul, Trump and the great awakening was this catalyst sphere to where we, what, who you are, where you're at spiritually, that is exactly what you would perceive by, by staring into this sphere. Nice. And, um, do you know what I mean? So like, you know, that's why he is so, he, he absolutely started, I mean, the polarization, he reflected our consciousness. We all thought, you know, it is like, oh, he he made everybody polarized. No, he didn't. He brought to our attention how messed up we are. It's always been there. He just had us see ourselves, you know, in our in in the, the collective reflection. And like maybe he I think he's an actor too. I'm not gonna like to the degree that he is initiated and he knows more of what he's letting off, you know, in that sense. Yeah. Um, so, well, maybe he's yeah. not even real, like you're saying a, a machine or like we can just project onto it, but it doesn't feel us. So it can continue going along with what it's programmed to do. Cause I've physically went to a couple of the, the whatever's the rallies. And I was just rallies, looking at yeah. this thing and I was like, that guy's not there. Like Same. he's not really there. Like, well, there's nothing there. Like it was cute because he's so in a funny. full suit and it was so hot. And I was just watching him go about the movements, like nothing. And I was like, that's impossible. Wow. Like homie's not even sweating. Like, <laughs> you so know, it cool. it's like the avatar. It's like, yeah, his avatar is a reflective surface. He is a living, breathing machine and he's 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 i'm not saying he's a robot i just believe that like he was chosen for this role everything from the way that he looks to the way that he sounds you know hit the solar energy he it's catalyst energy for the great awakening it was uh, big time and i i hope personally i hope he comes back i don't think he ever really left um Right. I think that the office of the presidency is no more. I think that this whole thing in part served to reveal that our election system is corrupt and rigged and that we're really going to have to do our own thing now. It's it's sink or swim, I feel like. Well, that was a bit of the rumor that I got that same day that of the Maui experience was that something along that was being also dealt with that day. So it was kind of that mixed feeling like, Ooh, that might've been happening at the same time, but I'm grateful that we're, I think also we're being desensitized. Like when they do this, it's to desensitize us to like do something else. So maybe even by Tuesday, there'll be that announcement and it'll be like, we'll already have been traumatized a little bit. So we won't react yeah. as heavily. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, we're so cute. Like they literally can compare our behavior to like rats and bunnies and, and fish. Like, and we all do the same things when yeah. the stimuli comes in a certain way. Like we're very cute and simple and the- They know that, what we're going to do. Yeah, they know how we're going to react. And then, then there's the light also, like the wise ones who are like, listen, we've seen this before. And this is also what we're thinking. Like here's some sort of- a, exterior thought and like add it to the 
pile. Like we're not going to say we're right, but just add it to the schema that you're creating in your own experience from witnessing this and also expand your resources. Like if you're only realizing you're getting your news from Twitter, get it from somewhere else at the same time and like start expanding where you're getting information from so you can get a variety of perspective and not get, you know, led along like a lemming. Like just stop letting yourself get led into an emotional reaction. Stop letting yourself getting led into arguing about circumstances of a thing you never were there to witness. Like if you can't see it, smell it, feel it, you know, if you aren't physically there, then you really are going to have a lack of awareness about what's going on. And like to claim, you know, when you never were, it's, you're going to cause problems. Like, and this is people's lives. Like, this is serious. Like, it's not even funny. There's no, like, just hearsay. It's like, you got to tiptoe around this one for sure. (laughs) And I never want to like, offend anybody who really got hurt because that's what I came here to the earth to help with was to be of right. service to whatever was a necessary need like just see a need and fill a need and if it was happening in my neighborhood I'd be there bare barehanded like helping right away no problem and that's what I think is happening on the island I'm watching people even drive their boats up to the shore with supplies around the blockades and stuff to just like yeah. hand stuff off boats to people because the people there just can't, they won't let themselves be fully bossed around is one feeling that I, I got. It. And yeah, they're like, Cute. it's almost like I can tell they're trying to get everybody out of the location, but there's people who are stubbornly squatting in the location and they're like now getting their friends to give them supplies to continue yeah. squatting in the location. So the battle's not over. Like it's, it's not going to be simple there. It's, this right. isn't a simple one. It's, as much as they're trying to simplify it, I feel like it's not going to be simple, which is great. And that's the human spirit. Like, oh yeah, very complex. We're here. It's never, it's never thing. So um, I'm excited to see how it develops and like the strength it maybe will bring back to the the momentum for like their rights and like human rights and the shifts that they've been wanting as a community. Like they're also that momentum to like deal with that. And it's like that void has created that potential for some of these issues to get really vocalized and like for people to care which is cool yeah because you never know you really never know how tough you are until you have no choice until you literally have to and you made a really great point about um you know exposing yourself to various types of news outlets you know it's easy to get you know, caught up in, in the scrolling and it's like, okay, well, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, you know, you're getting the same news that everybody freaking else is getting. Yeah. And this past year, I've really felt called to pay a lot more attention to natural news from places in places like India, places like the, you know, deep, deep Asia, deep in the Asian continent where, Mm -hmm. You know, they don't really have TikTok. Um, I mean, they, you know what I mean? Like, hey, I'm just ear to the ground about natural occurrences. Um, you know, the the trees behaving differently, the water behaving differently. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and and you're huge on like your thing is space weather mm-hmm. and and you know the Schumann the Schumann resonance and so you know like we it's not separate like they they are in they're they're sort of mirroring each other so you know it's a lot of folks are you know they're very into the political dog and pony show I almost can't stomach it anymore between the the details of he said she said I'm just like you're all boring to me you're all tacky you're all fake I like I but there are people that handle the political side of it and that's great that's their path Mm -hmm. but for me I felt so feel so guided to like the waters of the earth and you know the waters beneath us the waters above us like it's like listen like all of the water molecules on planet earth are subject to the changing harmonics and we have water inside our body so like we've all seen what happens to water molecules when it's put under a very specific frequency and if there are um, battles right now dominate you know attempting to dominate our field our force field so who's who is going to have a stronger influence 
on the harmonics here? Is it going to be the military industrial complex? Is it going to be planet Earth herself? Who is going to win in the field, you know, the, the quantum field? Um, who's going to have influence over the waters of the planet and the waters within the people? And, you know, oh, maybe that's why they took my video down for medical disinformation because my, what I'm, be I'm careful. trying to is- <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, stop. <laughs> wait, hold on, shut up. Yeah. yeah. Harmonics, you guys. Um, I see. Your body wants to, uh, cal- um, uh, what's the word? Calibrate. You know, it wants to calibrate itself. It wants to do like a tuning fork has the ability to pull everything around it into its frequency. And so if they're blasting some kind of synthetic, distorted harmonic frequency, our molecules in our body are going to be distorted and weird and ah! And I think that's what the, this thing was meant to do is to attune us to their, you know, whatever that malevolent weaponry is but the earth herself is trying to pull us back i mean maybe she's not maybe she's indifferent maybe she doesn't care i think she cares if we care about her she cares about us you know um and in that way i really do think humans are for the most part missing this this symbiotic relationship between us and and the great plant you know the great mother um but she's just you know i just feel her calling to people to remember who and what we are yes um, in in the wake of all this and it's like watch you know look at what the waters are doing look at what the mountains are doing listen listen you know listen to the to the trees i know i sound like a real kook but you guys like the trees have data in them the way that a computer stores data So like it, they remember everything, everything is stored. So, you know, the idea they're trying to tell us we need their AI, we need their 15 minute cities, we need their, their digital currency, their centralized this and that we already have that on planet earth. There is another way. So, um, yeah. Yes. It's redundant to digitize something that's already happening. It's expensive. I agree. I also think that, I mean, I was just recently finally got to go in the ocean for the first time in many years. And I was going to just like not bathe until I could go back as a protest, but I, it didn't work out for my sanity. I couldn't quite do that, but oh my God, no, it's on the list where I'm like, okay, I really feel like I had to go back because it reset my hardware in a way that just nothing else can. There's just nothing else that can compare oh, to what? submerging in the ocean. It just it just changes you. And I was like, this is the health. Like if I'm seeking healthy life, I have to live here to be healthiest, my healthiest. Cause that's where I perform the healthiest. I don't know if yeah. that's different for everyone, but that's true. And I was watching again, I was watching the water and I was watching the nature and it's better if you live in a place more than a year. Cause then you can watch the migrational patterns and the, the hatchings of all the bugs and because everything only lasts a couple of weeks with them. And like, even the animals, yeah. they go through their birthing cycles and their migration cycles. And I want to see how it's been changing and behaving. And I mean, the water here changed the, it's the driest, the Sonoran desert has been since the year I was born 30 years ago. So it was just like very bizarre. Yeah. And everyone, everyone's like, where's the water? And it's flooding and over raining in areas in Asia and so on. Like you've been watching and yeah. all I've been getting over and over again is also the migrational fish, like they go up and down and the riverways and of our North America, of no- all of America, basically this whole chunk of landmass from North to South, like the riverways were so important and were traveled by our people and fished by our people and connected our people for so long. And then this control structure and all these blockades and blockages and so on are being put in place. And it, it's not helping anybody in my opinion. It, it makes no sense to me why that was even, why even Gaia allowed that stuff to happen. Like why she wouldn't just move around it or do something. And I'm assuming she did, but I feel like that's another thing that we're supposed to watch and like, it is going to change and we have to bring that back or consciously choose to bring that back. Like that flow of the water 
at least on the surface too, like underneath and all the underground oceans and rivers and so on too, like those are just as important, but not as much a travel area for our food per se. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking more about fish and us being able to feed ourselves Mm -hmm. still with, and the natural, like whatever platelets or white blood cells or whatever that would be considered like whatever nutrients in the blood of our, of our world that we can live off of. And I just Mm -hmm. want to re-naturalize us. And I feel like that is going to be possible soon. And I'm not even sure how, as we also have this net of satellites going up and around our planet, but maybe that net will free up our area from all of this infrastructure. And that can just be taken away. We don't need all this other infrastructure and like dams and so on, creating electricity, like you don't need that anymore, like those sort of things. So I'm curious, but I really feel like it has to be soon. Like we're going to have to make these choices more soon than ever. And there, and even the tribal rights and so on, on all of, all of reservations and so on, like the, the tribal leaders and like the tribal governments and so on, they're all rising up in consciousness too. And they're all getting in better communications because of the technology, like they can talk to each other more, and they're organizing more and the land that they were pushed off of, but they want to buy back and like get back to it. Yeah. All of that, like people, I don't even think like all of us city born kids, like a lot of us don't know about what's going on with that whole side of the governments too. And all of these treaties that were not upheld and like these contracts and so on that were not followed through on property. Like there is some sort of thing that's going to have to make you follow through on like on that stuff. And I've been feeling that a lot, like these contracts are coming up and they're being fulfilled and at whatever nature wants it to, or like some sort of karmic law or something. <laughs> I'm curious. So keep an eye out for that kind of activity also in your area. Definitely get on the side of those, like trying to rewild the world and make things more fair because it'll work out better that way I think for you (laughs) if you get on that team get on you know get do be one of the good people you know not because you're afraid of the consequences but because it's just the way to be you know and you'll live a happier life if you're not a, a shit to people and to the world around you. That's, that's my, that is my distilled philosophy after years of doing this kind of work is do not be a shit. How about that? So I believe that there are guardians of this planet. Yep. uh, That simply cannot, will not allow for certain things to happen um, an example would be uh, when unfreeze, <laughs> unfreeze. <laughs> um, when uh, you know NORAD or uh, similar organizations are attempting to work on their nuclear capabilities, and we just had this Oppenheimer movie. <laughs> Barbenheimer, which there's no accident. Okay. That was total programming. I haven't seen either video, no hate, no shade. You liked it. You liked it. I don't care. I really don't give a shit. But the idea is that there are guardians. There are literal contracts, transnational, supranational, multi-planetary contracts that do not humans and the military industrial complex, the ancient death cults, they are only allowed to do so much. You know, the, we are not the only creatures that live on this planet. We're not even the only humanoids that inhabit this planet. So while, you know, the, the death cults, the billionaires, all of these sick people are attempting to hoard resources, monopolize water, monopolize f- seeds and food, they're they may be completely ignorant or not care or they could have arrogance they could there is any any reason you know there's a million reasons why they they do what they do um i think a lot of them are inbred too to be honest with you i think they're like not functioning fully on on like all not all cylinders are firing properly 
but you know, when, why do they shut off and reconfigure the internal computer, these top, top, top secret nuclear uh, um, devices or these nuclear um, computers because you can't do that because you can't do that. That's why um, not allowed to do that. And so, right. you know, the, the CERN, the Hadron Collider and the idea that the ancient death cults are going to recreate and bring back online some kind of a network and allow certain portals to be opened so they can o- basically open the gates of hell to allow all of these terrible things to flood through and feed on men, women, and children and enslave us. You know, it's, it's a good idea, you guys, like nice fucking try, but you can't do that because that completely disrupts the balance. And I believe that there are guardians of this planet. They might not be on humanity's side, but they, they here, they're here to instill a neutrality. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They might not really give a shit about us. They might look at us like, oh, they're ruining everything. We don't care. But it's not about the people. It's not about the surface population. It's about the, it's about the balance. It is about the balance. And I think that the ancient death cults, the people that are trying to pull this off, I think that they have bitten off way more than they can chew. I think they are just wildly out of their league. Um, And I think that there are guardians that are, you know, they're capable. They do it all the time. They, they tell, they're like, nope, no, you don't sit down, sit down like kindergartners. So and this might all be a painful, exciting, tragic, exhilarating exercise in remembering all of this information and coming to terms with it so that we can like m- more intelligently navigate the future. But uh, fear and worry definitely never helped anything. So yeah, we're, we're not about that. And guardians, they have no fear so no they don't they don't have any fear the fear what do they have to be afraid of you know what I mean like I feel like the death cults like they use death to scare people they're like you're gonna die and Catherine Austin Fitz I've been talking about her a lot because I'm like I've, mm. I've been binging all of her content she has a Solaris report a Solari report um fascinating stuff um she used to be President Bush's like master of coin so she was like on the inside and now she's like you guys like don't fear death, fear the integrity of your immortal soul, <laughs> because that's what this game is on for, it is the ability to control and enslave something that really, you know, the immortal soul should never be enslaved. Um, and they can't do it without your help. They can't do it without your consent. Um, so this, that's why you got to be, you just don't be a shit. Just don't be a shit. Yes. It's the self-policing that is the only convincing factor it's like you police you're convincing yourself to police yourself away from certain things but you're the infinite creator in motion like you don't need to police yourself the same way like you will be police like there if you when you are in the wrong direction you will definitely get redirected and yeah don't fight it don't fight that don't you know you can throw a fit but it's not worth it like be oh, grateful you're just in you're just making it harder for yourself. Yeah. Just, like, go with the flow. I had a, a dream, a very like vivid, real experience. It was just a dream. I was, I was um, being carried by a giant eagle, like, like from Lord of the Rings, you know, yeah. at the end, like the big, huge eagles. And then this eagle had me and swooped down with me in its talons and dropped me into a deep freezing cold white river and it spoke to me telepathically and said don't fight or you'll drown and I remember hitting the water and I was like you know like it it was like when you really are submerged in an ice bath like I felt it and it was I was head to toe cellular excited 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 what there was no doom there was no terror there was no this is the end it was get excited don't fight it and roll with it let it take you and um yeah and so it's like 
you know, any, anything where we're feeling, and this goes for anything and everything, everything in your life where you're feeling resistance, that is going, you know, in the coming weeks, months, years, it is going to call you to face it. Because I really think we're all being asked to, you know, get right with the self so that when we peer into that sphere, we experience the most pure reflection of, of the true soul. The soul isn't tainted. I don't listen to what a lot of the fundament, fundamentalist fake religious people talk about sin and stain and this and that. And it's like, Ugh. no, I, I can't, I can't like miss me with that bullshit. That's people projecting their own guilt and shame and all that stuff. So it, it's like, you are, you're fine. You are loved. You are fine. You are God experiencing itself. Forgive yourself first and foremost. Hell is a state of consciousness where you cannot rise above your guilt and your shame. And oh my God, like, yeah, you're going to torture yourself for eternity for sure. But it's not going to be the devil. It's not going to be God. So now you make yourself so useless when you do that. Like you're not helping anybody. You're not giving anything out. You're not smiling. It's like you've you've become inert so it's like you're gonna decompose <laughs> if you don't yeah. start participating again yeah do better next time do better yeah you guys just do better yeah so do you want to pull a card for everybody um I feel like we should do one in closing I don't really yes. I have no whatever you want to do I'll grab a fun something for the closing card who do I want to work with? I'm going to work with the unicorns. Yay. Love the unicorns. Well, that'll work. All right. Oh, it's going to key out. Never mind. You guys, Doreen Virtue doesn't want you knowing about her decks anyways. <laughs> Don't talk about her. She'll get mad. Really? Yeah, she like renounced her all her work. and. How sad scary. is that sh- that pissed me off, man. It's like, oh, Doreen. But they're so godly. Like, it makes me oh, feel amazing. close to God. That's what she wanted the whole time. Hey, everybody's path to each their own. It is what it is. Thank you. I still say thank you, Doreen, for paving the way. So what what are we asking? I guess what's our wrap up for this video today and this, you know, really sacred conversation we had like this was a powerful container we mamas we care like we care i give a shit we do care and we have genuine love in our hearts and we want to be there to support and love on whoever needs a little extra so that's why i do my videos is just being like it's your service it's your service it is your beacon and you know, I just, I'm here for it. I'm so here for it. I love working with Alexa. She and I just have a, we have a good, I think we have a good chemistry and we really have a good, healthy, like understanding. She, she's a, she happens to be a really great like space holder and listener and I'm a Gemini and I love to just yep, 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 yep. And she, she's so patient with me and she lets me go off. And I appreciate that so much. Well, I mean, and we're both in like the community of people who speak out, who are talking about these dark topics constantly and like working through them. I know exactly all the stuff you're going to be saying. I hear, I heard everything you said and was like, yep, that's resonating with me. I've heard, we've had, I've had many of these conversations and it's just, it's clear. It's clarity. Like the, the orb is clear with you. Like I can see exactly what you're trying to say. I love it. All right. What'd you get? I've got some jumpers. Dang. Ooh, okay. I got one for all of us and it says forgive. forgive little baby girl and her unicorn. And it's time oh. to let go of anger or blame. Yeah. And they're on the beach again. So I'm not ready to let go of anger and blame. Damn it. Uh-oh. Well, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> get your unicorn right. You got to get your unicorn and pet it and hold it. And then you'll be like, okay. Aw. That's what I get. What I wouldn't do to cradle a baby unicorn. Oh, my oh. God. <laughs> You'd be like, I can forgive now. If this is yeah. what I get for being good, all right. Oh, <laughs> That's yes. a sweet visual. 
That's good. So I I like that forgiveness. So these are for you guys listening. Um, I wanted this to be like a message to whomever is tuning in. This is what you, you are going to want to hear. Like this is for you. Um, I've got the four of cups. I'm using the tarot tutorial, tarot tutorial deck. Alexis is the one who put me on this deck. I've never looked back. They're falling apart. They're yeah. like, so, cause I just can't, I don't know about you, but like, I guess my hands are just like, I don't know. I've got like dirty oily hands or something, but my cards smell like money. Like they smell like, a, my cards at this point smell like a wad of cash. They they're are like, they're like sweaty and smell like dollar dollar bills y'all. So <laughs> Four of Cups, Three <laughs> of Pentacles, and the Hanged Man. Oh. So, and this could be a very, very specific message for those uh, tuned into this right now. But what I'm getting um, is that within the team, all right, if, if to those of you listening, if you are currently working with a small group of people, it could be three people, it could be a very small community um, of, you know, 10 people, 12 people, it could be 50 people, but these are small communities that typically like under good circumstances, they collaborate together. They help each other. They build together. Mm -hmm. But with the four of cups and the hanged man, I'm under the impression that in the company today, or when this message reaches you, um, over the course of the next several days and possibly like the next 12 days, actually, that's what I'm getting 12 day, a 12 day period. Hmm. Um, do not allow yourself to miss out on an opportunity. There's a lot here about that, that feeling of missing out, you know, oh, I should have said this or, oh, day, I wish I would have presented this in this way at this time. And, you know, I feel like people could be under the weather right now. Four of cups comes up a lot when people are dealing with things like stagnation depression you know some uh, if you're dealing with an illness or drama or issues external issues that fight or flight response is you know uh, that comes up for everybody you might be feeling that um that's where you don't act you freeze the freeze response so some of some of us some of you who have listening you may feel very sort of baited into the freeze response in the coming days, in the coming 12 days or so. Um, You know, you obviously do whatever you feel you have to do. If you have to rest, then you rest. But what I don't want to happen is this feeling of, I became so apathetic and I became so, so stagnant or so afraid to speak up or do this thing that I missed this opportunity, at least this time around Um, And now you may have to wait for the next cycle, you know, for the next opportunity. And you just don't want dealing with regret is like so nasty. Regret is like up there with like shame and guilt as far as like just emotions that drag you down to a place of, like you said, like you're now you're inert now, now you're, you're, you don't, you're not helping anybody. So take the opportunities to fight that apathy, fight that feeling of, well, nobody is going to listen to me. Nobody cares what I have to say. No, uh, put it out there, you know, put it out there and also su- support your lymphatic system. Anytime I have a lot of water energy coming up in the cards and, and you and I were talking about this a lot, the lymphatic system is under a lot of pressure. I think for a lot of people right now, I was talking to another girlfriend of mine and we were talking about bras and how bras are like, a conspiracy to like harm women because it totally impedes lymphatic drainage. I'm only wearing a bra now because e- trust me, <laughs> you don't want me to not wear a bra. I mean, some of you might, but uh, I'll, I'll just you know. keep the camera up here next time. <laughs> just zoom it in. Time. Or just wear like a big, you know, like a big jacket or something like that. But I hate bras. I think bras are yeah. terrible. Free the tatas, let your lymphatic system do what it wants to do naturally. Very important because we're, we're filtering a lot of nasty chemicals in the air and the food and everything. So support your system. But that's my message. Um, don't allow apathy to, to bait you into a freeze response in the coming 12 days. If you take rest where you need it, but jump back into the game because you are needed. 
You are needed. You're here. You're functional. You're meant to be here. You're meant to function. And the two of coins also, the two of pentacles you got earlier with the tree on both sides and how it means kind of like balancing your your home and your work life, your financial realm and so on. So it was interesting that that came up for this reading too, like this video and the the area that was in, it's like it is getting a major balancing, like they're juggling some stuff right now. So it, it's almost like a free opportunity too for us to like move that momentum for the whole world. Like, okay, let's, let's rehash this. Let's rehash Use these it. issues. Use yeah. It. Use this if, opportunity. If there's gonna be, yeah. Like never, you know, the cabal never lets a good tragedy go to waste. Neither should we. Agreed. Like if people are going to shed blood in this game, if they're going to make the ultimate sacrifice and, you know, cross that threshold into of death into and return to source, let us bear witness to that and yes. make something of it. You know, it's, it's, it's this one thing that I think the, I call them the, the ancient death cults because I hate calling them elite. They, they're not my elite. They're inbreds. As far as I'm concerned, they're a bunch of freaking losers, a bunch of losers but they are not accounting for what happens when the human heart is set ablaze by responsibility and compassion because they don't have that. They just don't have it. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's what I think we should do. Easier said than done, I know, but you know. But this video was entirely designed to set your soul and your heart on fire, to feel purpose, to go out and be better now. Be make better choices starting now, and you'll you'll be forgiven. And uh, yeah, and if you witness those beings being that way, maybe you could perform a better option for them to finally be enlightened about another way to behave. But uh, otherwise, don't give them any more of your time and attention. If you don't need to <laughs> move on, cause there's a lot of non, there's a lot of wonderful people who, and young people too, who just need some sort of structure and some grounding from the elders too. So just keep doing and someone is watching you at all times. Like you're being watched at all times, but you're being watched more than maybe you realize by those who are trying to emulate and be become adults and like grow into their role as the guardians of this world. And I call my Patreon thing that I do every month, the guardian training. And this month we're going to do a a space weather class on the 18th. So that's in a few days to train some more people who are, have been activated recently because people just continually get activated with the solar explosions and so on. I get more and more like new people who are like, okay, I get it now. Like, tell me how to read this. And I'm like, okay, great. So I'm excited to teach that again on the 18th. If you're interested, you can go to my Patreon Ascension Diaries to do that sign up or just message me and I'll get you in. doesn't matter. And I'll post it later too. So it can be on for public stuff. Like I do most of my stuff. It's just like, here, go take it, take it and go. Cause I'm already wanting to build the next thing I'm moving. I'm, you know, the guardians don't have time. We're not like, oh, we just want to make sure we're making enough money on this product. It's like, no, that's not why we're here. Like, <laughs> right. Set it, forget it. Move on to the next thing. Keep exactly. It, keep it moving. Keep the we're flow moving. Post- that's good for your lymph. Also do your rebounder. Yes. I bought some poke P-O-K-E from Hawaii, actually, right before this happened as a lymphatic drainage uh, herbal. So if you haven't heard of that, maybe that's a little addition at the end there, but Thank you all very much for coming to this video and we hope you enjoyed it. Get yourself some cards. If you haven't yet, maybe write on your own, make mm-hmm. your own conversation a little and your meditations a little bit more. Uh, yeah. I would say out of the box, like out of your own mental box, it helps to kind of inject that spirit and like that fire and like sparks of inspiration from the outside of your own little mind prison that we can get stuck in. So yeah, I'm glad oh, we yeah. did this. Thank you. Me too. Oh, thank you too. I we hope you guys have had a wonderful time. Uh, Alexis and I plan on doing this uh, again. Certainly, we just we love our Tarot Tuesdays, no matter what day of the week that it is. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this was a lot of fun. Glad we could do it. Um. So yeah, I guess until next time, Earthlings. Mm-hmm. Bye. Bye. Yeah, don't be shit. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs>